back to Relationships at Work, your guide to building workplace connections and avoiding leadership blind spots. I'm your host, Russell Lolliker. I'm a communications and leadership nerd, just like you. I've had a couple of decades, successful decades in both of those areas, and I also bring with me a whole heap of curiosity on how we can make the workplace a better place. If you're a leader trying to understand and improve your impact on work culture and the employee experience, well, you're in the right place. This is a mini episode. It's about... 10 minutes or so, uh, a quick, valuable bit of information on top of our regular show that drops Tuesdays, but this is pretty much our regular show too. It just drops every Thursdays and is a little, little shorter. This is always inspired by our Raw Notes newsletter, which you can always pick up. Just go to russellolliker.com or relationshipsatwork.ca. You'll find your ability to download it from there, all free, by the way. But let's get into it. Let's get right to what we're talking today. Today, the Raw Note newsletter brings to you, why are we investing in cultural debt? In the world of IT and software development, there's an important term to understand known as technical debt. Basically, rather than take the time, the resources, or strategy needed for a better approach to address any problems, leadership and teams conduct shortcuts, band-aids, easier approaches to address symptoms now with no real interest at the time anyway, or little regard in how these could have later impacts. Technical debt is the consequence of all those shortcuts, all those band-aids heaping up, piling on over time. It's that fix the symptoms, not the disease kind of thing. And then just, you know, hope it'll go away. But you and I both know it never does. It actually gets worse and worse and worse, no matter the blind eye we put to it. The more shortcuts we take, it just adds up over time with that true cost down the road. And eventually we won't be able to avoid those problems as they continue to build up. I always appreciated the term technical debt, because this is something I, I know I'm aware of, but I didn't quite have a name for it. It kind of inspired me to look at other areas of work that it could also be used to explain in this way. Workplace cultures that absolutely comes to mind. Cultural debt, band-aids, quick fixes, grand gestures. It's all a smoke screen. It might look like we're doing the work that we need to, to maintain and, and even create those healthy cultures, but they're all kind of hollow when it gets right down to it because we're not taking the steps that matter. Employees aren't dumb. They know when leaders are checking boxes rather than investing in the organization's culture. So what are the things we as leaders do that causes things like cultural debt? Well, I'm, I'm going to share a few with you. And I hope, I hope none of us are in organizations that are doing this, but we need to be hyper aware. First, ignoring root problems. This is like, hey, you want a pizza lunch? How, how about some perks? Look that way. Don't look that way when they have unhappy staff. But we don't ask the questions like, why are they unhappy? You know, important questions like that. Why aren't we asking that question? This just causes problems that will reemerge later on, that cultural debt. Number two, superficial engagement. Initiatives like engagement surveys, workshops that have no follow-up, no follow-through, employees are just going to become cynical if they aren't already about leadership's commitment to actually making change. Another one that drives me nuts is overlooking toxic behavior like avoiding confrontation with toxic employees because it'll either go away or they feel like it's not rocking the boat. You know, if they don't engage, we're not, we're not making it worse, right? I've talked about this in my seven deadly sins of leadership. The toxic behavior, it's just going to spread. If you overlook it, it's never going to go away. In fact, it'll only get worse. And last, another one of the things that is contributing to this cultural debt Values as a lip service, where it's about talking about values. I've said it on posters. I've said it on websites. I would throw missions and visions in this as well. Instead of operationalizing them, instead of making them a reality, we just talk about them. This is the walk the walk versus talking the talk situation. It just erodes credibility. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to, because I want to get into how we can fix these things. Workplace cultural debt is the accumulated cost of not addressing problems in the company's culture, its values, and its work environment. 
just like technical debt, it adds up when issues related to workplace culture are just ignored, they're overlooked, or really just not being properly addressed. Now, if we're going to address cultural debt, it's going to require leaders to lead and to have a proactive approach to cultivating a positive, inclusive, and effective workplace culture. If we want to be better leaders, and we do, and avoid accumulating this cultural debt, here's a few areas we really should invest in. Promoting and modeling open, transparent communication. We can't ignore things if it's just part of the culture to talk about them openly. Regularly communicating our values too, our goals, changes that we've made to everybody, to everybody impacted, to all employees. We need to create an environment where employees can criticize us as leaders and where truth to power is encouraged without repercussions. Another thing we can invest in is cultivating that DEI piece, diversity, equity, and inclusivity. I say it's a piece, I really mean the DNA of your organization. We can implement policies and training that promote inclusion and equitable treatment. And, you know, regularly check in to see if those efforts are actually working or not, and then adjust accordingly. Another one I couldn't get more behind is promoting employee well-being. Are we an organization that provides resources for mental health support, like counseling systems or stress management workshops? Having these services available really demonstrates to the employee that the leadership cares about the whole person, cares about not just the quote unquote nine to five or the, did you do the thing that I asked you to, but also how employees show up, how they deal with stress, how they deal with that accumulative cultural debt. This is certainly a way to avoid accumulating it at all. And last, I can't stress enough the importance of continuous learning and investing in that to take down that cultural debt. Maybe it's providing mentorship programs or career development to help employees progress in their careers. We feel like it's not just up to them to come up with a five-year plan, but we're part of that journey too. You know, leadership. We're helping those employees understand what those careers could look like rather than just leaving it completely in their hands for them to figure out. We're partners in this, aren't we? Now, these are just some of the foundational things to a healthy culture. And if we don't focus and nurture on them, that's where the rot can start and grow into that cultural debt. Allowing workplace cultural debt to grow, to go untreated, it just leads to bad things. Reduced productivity, high employee turnout, poor morale, it can ultimately impact the organization's success and sustainability. This is not something we put our heads in the sand about and hope problems go away. This will cost us staff, it will cost us money, it will cost us productivity, it will hit us in the bottom line. And if we have leaders that aren't interested in the human aspect, so they're not really leaders, and they're just in the productivity organization, cultural debt hits them too, and they need to understand that. It's our job to help them understand that. We need to regularly invest in our organizations with the time, resources, and intent that it deserves, that our culture deserves, that our employees deserve. It's about focusing on the patient and not the symptoms. Anything else is just a pizza party that we want to use as an excuse for what workplace culture is supposed to look like. And that will bring to end this mini episode of Relationships at Work, your guide to building workplace connections and avoiding leadership blind spots. I'm Russell. Thanks again, once again. Thanks again, once again. Sure. Uh, for joining me uh, and appreciate you joining me on your journey, your leadership journey in improving the workplace. Uh, I can't appreciate you more. And if you found this to be helpful, uh, please share with others. It could be just a message, an email, a conversation going, hey, I listened to this recent episode. It really resonated. It might resonate with you. Something like that. It just helps the show grow. I just can't appreciate you more for that. Thank you so much. Take care.